When I was growing up, all of our laundry was done in the basement of our home. Washed there, dried, ironed if necessary, and folded. The rule of thumb came in our family that if you're going upstairs for any reason whatsoever, first take a look around. See if anything was ready to be brought upstairs. And if so, never go empty-handed. It seemed to become a family mantra. Never go empty-handed. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, today we're bringing closure to our nine-day novena of hope. What a wonderful nine days these days were. Days for praying. Days of listening to God speak to us. God speaking to us through the rosary. God speaking to us through Mary, the mother of God. God speaking to us through his son, Jesus. God speaking to us in meditations. God speaking to us through the miraculous metal novena. And isn't it interesting that whenever as a community that we pray this miraculous metal novena, it always leads us to Jesus in the Eucharist. Whether we're praying a solemn novena of nine consecutive days, or whether we participate in a perpetual novena as prayed every Monday, no matter when we pray the miraculous metal novena as a community, it always leads us to Jesus in the Eucharist. Either celebrating the Eucharist at Mass, as we will today, or concluding our novena prayers with benediction, which we do very, very frequently. As this experience seems to tell us, that no matter when we approach Mary, for whatever reason whatsoever, she always leads us to her son. And our experience in life tells us that Jesus is always anxious to see us. Anxious in the good sense. A happy anxious. I've been waiting for you. For whatever reason we come to the Lord, for consolation, for encouragement, enlightenment, for forgiveness. Whatever reason we come to the Lord, he's happy to see us. Whenever you find life troublesome or burdensome, come to me and I will refresh you. So Mary, our mother, leads us to our son. Jesus is always happy to see us. And when we encounter him, invariably, he gives us a blessing. It could be a blessing of friendship. It could be a blessing of peace, of joy, of consolation, of forgiveness. Jesus always has a blessing for us when we encounter him. And one of the blessings that Jesus is going to give us today is a papal blessing. A papal blessing that people receive when they participated in a solemn novena. And one of the gifts of a papal blessing is a plenary indulgence. 
And what is a plenary indulgence? Well, technically, a plenary indulgence takes away all the temporal punishment due to sin. But when we unravel that, what does it mean? Well, in my mind, it means it's a, a healing indulgence. When a bone is broken, a doctor resets it. And the bone is back where it should be. But it needs a period of healing before it's at a place where it was before it was broken. Or when there's a rupture in a person's friendship with another, an argument, a disagreement, and mishap, and apologies are offered, and friendships are restored, well, friendship is there again, but it's a little tender. It needs some healing to get back to the place where it was before the rupture. Sin separates us from God, either slightly or grievously. There is forgiveness, and the friendship is restored with the Lord. But our human dynamic needs some healing time before we feel we're at the place of the Lord where we were before the rupture. And it seems to me that an indulgence hastens that healing process. Now be one of the blessings that the Lord will give us today for participating in this novena of hope. An indulgence we can use for ourselves or designate for someone else. And that blessing will be bestowed and offered at the end of our Mass today. A couple of recommendations as our novena is coming to a close. One is to continue praying the miraculous metal novena. We have it here every Monday in nine services. First service, seven o'clock in the morning. Final service begins 7.30 in the evening. Nine individual services during the day. And so more than likely, we can find the time to come on Monday to participate in this novena. And why do I encourage you to continue praying the novena? I encourage you because life is wonderful and light is great. life is great. But to every one of our lives, without exception, Difficulties and challenging and challenges always find their way into our lives. It could be a health issue, a financial difficulty, a family crisis because of strained relationships, spiritual temptations to sin, or may have something to do with an addiction to drugs or alcohol or pornography or gambling. And so many situations might affect us personally or associated with somebody we love that is undergoing some of these difficulties. And we can deal with these situations any way we choose. We can ignore them, hoping that if we don't look at them, they'll go away on their own. Our experience in life tells us, however, that's never the case, that a stitch in time saves nine. But if we ignore that stitch, things don't get better, they get worse. Or I can try to approach these difficulties as a strong individual. I will face them and I will unravel them all by myself, which is a good attitude to have, that we want to deal with them. But you have to recognize the fact that we are creatures, we are created, and we have gifts and talents, but they're limited. And we can apply our gifts and talents and it'll help somewhat. But many of these difficulties and challenges are way beyond our own personal abilities and gifts. And so by far the best way of dealing with such situations is to bring them to God ourselves, but also through others. We always want others to pray for us. 
And the best other to pray for our intentions is the mother of God. So I encourage you, in an ongoing way, bring our needs and petitions to God through Mary by coming to the Miraculous Medal Novena, which is a great opportunity for us every Monday. Secondly, I encourage you to have devotion and prayer through the rosary. What a great tool that God has given to us. What a great opportunity for nine days to just reflect upon that gift that God has given to us. And sometimes we become very intense for that period of time, but then when it's over, out of sight, out of mind. Don't let that happen. If we're used to praying the rosary regularly, take another look at the rosary. It has become so regular for us that we can pray without even thinking, and that's exactly what we do. Put ourselves in automatic control. Oh, we said the word, but my mind and heart wasn't there. Or have we not made the rosary a part of our spirituality? Consider after this novena to make the rosary a part of our prayer life. To have this little booklet. It gives us a meditation on every one of the mysteries. A very important tool to have as we pray the rosary. Have your rosary. And pray it prayerfully. Now, what I suggest is before each decade to read the meditation on that decade. And just pause for a moment. What is this meditation all about? What is this mystery all about? Who was involved in that mystery? How can I get involved myself? Reflect upon the mystery, feel the mystery. And then pray those Our Father, Hail Marys, and Glory be. And do it either continue to meditate on the mystery itself or concentrate on the words of the prayer. We have our choice. And we concentrate on those words. Commit ourselves to God's will and promoting God's kingdom in our life and in the world. And we say our daily bread, know that our daily bread is a physical bread and a Eucharistic bread. And pray for forgiveness that we may also be forgiving people for our transgressions, but also for the great reconciliation that will come at the end of time. And pray that we're not led into temptation. Temptations is a day that we may be spared for the ones that are very, very powerful. And for the great temptation of evil, that was some of the close of history. And then when we pray the Hail Mary, that we pray it from the eyes of Gabriel. What did Gabriel see when he said, Hail Mary? And what he saw was that Mary had Jesus in her womb. So Mary, for Gabriel, it was about Jesus. And why did Elizabeth say, Holy Mary? Again, I believe because it was about Jesus. She was the mother of God. And be very conscious of the word Jesus that joins both half of that Hail Mary. And pray the glory be to the Father. Really, this is a prayer of praise. A prayer that we're not asking God for anything, just praising God. Which one day we hope when we see God face to face will be our constant, constant prayer. Glory be to God. And I also encourage you to think of becoming a member of Mary's Miraculous Medal family. This is the largest prayer group in the world. The largest congregation of people praying for and with one another. We always want people to pray for our intention. Pray for my grandfather. Pray for my brother. Pray for my sister. Pray for me because I have a need. We want people to pray for us. In a miraculous metal family, it's the largest prayer group of people praying with and for one another. And in this brochure, which you can find downstairs, is a place where you can put your intention, whatever your intention might be. And we all have needs and concerns and difficulties. And I encourage you also to put your name and address in a proper place. 
And I encourage you for this time to forget the fee. Forget the fee. Put your knee, put your name and address, and give Mary the intention. Why do we ask you to put your name and address? Because, and you also put down that Father Chair recommended this. Because when Father Peeper gets this, he really loves to be able to talk to people about Mary's Miraculous Medal family. He'll send you a letter giving you more information about this family. And then you can make a decision. Is God calling me to be part of this family where I can pray for and with others and others can pray for and with me? But take this opportunity to have an ongoing relationship with Mary through Mary's Miraculous Medal family. And before we leave Mary's Shrine today, just take a look around of the last nine days. All the blessings that have been poured upon us here at the Shrine, at work, with our family, in the community, wherever we were. In these last nine days, how has God blessed us? And look for these blessings not only for ourselves, but the way God has blessed us for others. Because God does that. God invites us to be collaborators with him, to be his hands and bring his love and concern and forgiveness to others. Consider the woman at the well, an encounter with Jesus. She was very much blessed, but part of her blessing was to bring this story of Jesus to her community, which invited them to come to the Lord and have an encounter with him. So consider all the blessings that have been poured upon us in the last nine days. And then gather them all up. And when you leave Mary's shrine today, do not go home empty-handed. Go home with all the blessings and gifts that God has offered us the last nine days. Go home with your rosaries. Go home with your mysteries. Go home with Mary. Go home with Jesus Christ. Go home with God. But don't go home empty-handed. May God be praised.